Hi guys, welcome to Dubs Only Sports. Um, before we get into this episode, uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at Dubs Only Sports. And then if you want to watch the full episodes, because we make better points on those episodes, YouTube, Spotify, look us up. We're there. Um, we're kind of recording this like out on a limb here, only because the Chargers Jags game, we both had countering opinions on how the game would go. I said the Chargers would win. And for the first half, I was correct. I mean, damn near all the way, the entire game, I was correct. Um, But Mr. <laughs> Dylan over here, he has a video on Instagram, has a video on TikTok, talking about how the Jags are, you know, the Chargers are a good team, but the Jags and Doug Peterson are just better. And that was the case tonight. So Dylan, what have, what have you, what have you got to say about that? I mean, I'm not even going to lie, bro. It wasn't looking too good. It wasn't looking too good on, on my part. The Chargers looked like they had control of that game. But in the end, the Jags pulled it out. To my surprise, nope, because I it's exactly what I expected. I said that the Chargers are big chokers. That's what they are. And let's just get into this. The Chargers just showed us one of the biggest choke jobs in NFL history. I mean, what in God's name were they doing? 27 to nothing in the second quarter and had the ball. And then they lost the game 31 to 30, three points in the second half and gave up 24 points to Trevor Lawrence. Okay. Trevor Lawrence, the same Trevor Lawrence that threw four interceptions in the first half. Three of them to the same guy. Three to the same guy. He threw four picks, three to the same guy in the first half of the game. The, the Jaguars, okay. The Jaguars just beat the Chargers with a negative five turnover differential. Turned the ball over five times. The Chargers had zero turnovers, and the Chargers still blew a 27-0 lead. Brandon Staley, the coach of the Chargers, should be long gone from the Chargers. He needs to get fired ASAP. That guy Champagne. just sold the season for them. He played Mike Williams in Week 18, and that was a meaningless game, and Mike Williams had to miss this game due to an injury he suffered in that game. They lost that game, a meaningless game, in Denver with all their starters playing. Why were they playing in that game? Why did they even allow themselves to do that? I don't know. Don't ask me. Ask Brandon Staley, the newest uh, member of the free agent coaches in the NFL, because he's about to get fired. Okay. And then I feel bad for Justin Herbert because he's a good quarterback. And for him to have to experience and endure this absolute BS that the that the Chargers organization, I mean, the Chargers organization is just crumbling before our eyes. I mean, they're all the Chargers have always choked. That's the, they've been known to choke. I mean, they're basically a little less extreme than the Falcons, but they're on that level. I mean, they're a, they're a big choking organization. We saw a few years ago when they made the playoffs and they finally won a game. I think it was against the Ravens, and then the next game they go to New England, and they had a better record than New England, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and they got blitzed by like 30 points against Tom Brady. But I mean, the Chargers, what a joke! I mean, the Chargers have to be like, what a joke. You're 27. To, I just want to reiterate this, okay? For it to be such a joke that you're up 27 to nothing going in to the last two minutes of the first half, you give up a touchdown, okay? Then you take, I, I, it was like a 30 to 14 lead in like the end of the third quarter, and then you lose 31 to 30. How did you blow a 27 point lead? That's four touchdown lead. Outscored by four TDs against a quarterback who just threw four picks against you in the first half. Four interceptions. Not one, not two, not three. Four interceptions in the first half. And you still couldn't convert enough on those to to build a big enough lead. Who? I mean, I thought the 27 was enough. I thought 27 was a big enough lead. Apparently not. Apparently not. I mean, the Falcons in the Super Bowl blew a 25-point lead. 25-point lead. I mean, this is the third biggest blow. This is the third biggest blown lead in NFL playoff history okay mm -hmm. and it's just it, it's amazing to me how just teams that don't win continue to not win it's just it's in their <laughs> DNA in it's the Chargers DNA is to choke in big games and I can cut to the clip of before but I literally said that the Chargers were going to lose this game in Jacksonville because even though they had a, a more talented team even though their quarterback is better even though the, their defense is better they just choke they just choke, and some people are just not meant to win games. And the Chargers are not meant to win games. Even if they hire Sean Payton, the Chargers are better. They might still choke. They are the Dallas Cowboys. They are the Cowboys. That's exactly what they do. They choke in big moments. That's, I mean, it's amazing to me. 
it's amazing to me to, to watch this over and over again. I mean, it's just, it's so embarrassing to have mm-hmm. to, I mean, I feel bad for Chargers fans to have to endure this, this absolute blasphemy that they have to endure every single year. I mean, it's amazing. You have one of the most talented, if not the most talented roster in the NFL mm-hmm. and can't even make it to the divisional round because, I mean, they were supposed to win the division, honestly. I mean, they had, they had were people were projecting them to win the, the, win the division. They can't win close games in the regular season. They were not as good as Kansas City. And they get second place in the division. They make the playoffs. They have one of the better records in the AFC. And then they go to Jacksonville, who barely won their division and barely made the playoffs. And started the year like three and six was not a good team at all. Had a terrible secondary. Was carried by Trevor Lawrence, who's a good quarterback in the NFL, but not a top level quarterback. And uh, just a very young team. And you lose to that team. I mean, if you compare the Chargers and Jaguars rosters, it's not even a comparison. They're not even in the same ballpark. The fact that the Jaguars were in this game strictly is just because they did not choke like the Chargers did. The Chargers, this should not have been a game. If you look at this on paper, the Chargers should have blown the Jaguars out. But the Jaguars blew the Chargers out earlier in the year, and they came back and blew the Chargers out in the second half today because they know how to win the game. They know how to win the game when they really need to win the game. And the Chargers have this thing where they do not know how to win games. The whole main objective of sports and of the NFL and sports in general is to win, right? When you play a sport, you're supposed to win the game, okay? And apparently, some teams and some players just don't understand that. Like, they don't understand that the goal of the game is to score more points than the other team, right? Mm -hmm. And they just, they don't understand that. And I feel bad for them because someone needs to let them know. I mean, someone should let Brandon Staley know. I mean, that dude, that dude was hitting the like cat cow, which is sticking his ass out 24 seven on the Monday night football broadcast, like trying to stretch his low back. Maybe he should try to focus on instead of stretching his like low, low back and ass. He should start trying to like stretch his team into victories instead of L's bro. Like this is terrible, bro. (laughs) This is embarrassing. That coach should never have an NFL job ever again, bro. That coach is such a bum. I can get into it more, like, later. I mean, this bot next to me could probably do a better job than Brandon Staley. I mean, this kid can literally, like, you put like, a blind rat on, on as the coach of the, of the Chargers, and they, they would do better. Because the Chargers make so many crucial mistakes. I mean, they didn't do anything. They couldn't move the ball in the second half. All they punted every time. And it wasn't like... It's one thing if you like if you're the Chargers and you turn the ball over and then that's why you lose. Like, okay, it's the mistakes that we made that cost us the game. They didn't turn the ball over. They had zero turnovers the whole game. The the Jags had five turnovers. They lost a 27 point lead. I have nothing else to say. I want to hear from you now. I'm Brandon Staley. <laughs> um, I mean, look, I had I had um Going into it, I had the Chargers winning the game. And to be fair, like, yes, I agree with you. They choke a lot. But when I saw the when I saw the scoreboard say 27 nothing, I'm like, that is a comfortable lead. And then when it got to 30 to 20, I'm like, okay, this is where the game ends. And it didn't end. The Jackson, the Jags just kept on getting better, and the Chargers just kept getting worse. And um while watching the game, the commentators said, you know, like, oh, you know, Jacksonville has come back from a couple of 17 point deficits, but 24 or 27 just seems like, you know, like it doesn't really right. seem it's, like it a possibility. A much, right? And I was like, yes, I agree. Like, I feel like they will make it an interesting game by the end of the game, but I don't. And this was me at halftime. I was like, OK, it is 27 to 7 at halftime. Yes, I do believe that the Chargers are going to blow this lead without a doubt in my mind, but I don't think they will ever, like, I thought that it would be like a three-point game, but the Chargers would always be in front. That was me, like, going into halftime. I was like, okay, Chargers are going to blow this because they always do. I agree with that, but I just, I knew that they would come in hotter. That's that's what I said. I said that they would come in hotter and they would get a comfortable lead and that lead would just carry them to the end of the game. That didn't happen. It did not happen at all. It, did, it, it, just, it was not meant to be them. Not I mean, be. I... Just, I feel bad for Justin Herbert because I feel like it's not all his fault. Like He didn't do anything do wrong. Score? He didn't do anything like wrong, but he didn't do good enough to win the game. How do you not score more than three points in the second half? I feel like they ran the ball way too much. Like I saw Austin Eckler weird, running the ball used, way too much. The, yeah, that's weird because they ran the ball a lot today. But the whole year they haven't. Exactly. So today, I didn't get it. They just decided like 
Brandon Staley had one of those uh come to Jesus moments. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna run. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I haven't run all season, you know, and we got to the playoffs without running the ball. But yeah, we're gonna go up 27 nothing. We're gonna run the ball now. Okay. Oh my god. What? Well, I mean, yeah, Chargers season over. Jags still alive. Do they beat the Chiefs? Oh no, they don't beat the Chiefs. I mean, <laughs> it was a great story, but like, and I, I thank you, Trevor Lawrence. You cashed in my parlay, but like, oh. you guys are gonna get clapped next week in Kansas City. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, it's yeah, just, damn. Yeah, it's, it's it's a wrap for you guys. But like, respect though. Like, I respect you for being the Chargers because you got the job done. If you lost to the Chargers, you can't lose to Chokers. It's just that's not a good look. Mm-hmm. Like when the Dodgers lost to the Padres, it's not a good look because you're losing to like a bummy team. But like. When you're able to win that game, I respect. They didn't even make the playoff. They were the worst team in the NFL last year. They hired Doug Peterson, and now they won a playoff game. Respect to that franchise. Doug I respect Peterson that franchise. is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Changed my mind. That guy is a, is a very good coach. I can't Doug. believe the Eagles got rid of him. I know Sirianni is a decent job right now, yeah. but I still think that Doug Peterson should be the head coach of the Eagles. I don't know why they got rid of him. He was always a good coach. He won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles. Like, goaded. Who does that? But yeah, I mean, respect to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Chargers should go move, move. They should go move again, honestly. I mean, they, maybe they should go move to like Hawaii or something just to be even more relevant than they already are. They maybe replace go, the maybe Raiders. They, they go head over to Cabo and then they'll just be, they'll be at their home all year instead of only for the six months after they choke in the playoffs. So maybe they should just he- head out to Cabo. Um, LA is not for you. San Diego apparently was not for you. You have no fans. You have no dubs. You have no results. You have a quarterback with a lot of hair and no wins, so. Wow. I mean, that is a violation. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad for Justin Herbert because I think I really like him and I think he's a good QB, but I feel bad because he's on the Chargers and like as good as he is, they're never going to win there. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you know, that was you know we've only had the first like two playoff games. We don't even need to get into like the 49ers Seahawks game too much because oh, we knew a, what was going to happen. About that. I've, I mean, Brock Purdy, the only thing I want to say about that is that Brock Purdy, oh my God, this guy is insane. I mean, I was watching him, and like, I hadn't watched a lot of 49ers games in the last few weeks because they already had the playoff berth locked up. They had meaningless games. They had nothing to play for. But Mm -hmm. when you watch this guy, he's genuinely a good quarterback, like genuinely a very good football player. And for him to be drafted with the last pick of the draft just shows how stupid NFL GMs are. Yep. To not draft this guy. I mean, it just shows how ignorant they are. They drafted Zach Wilson second overall, Trey mm-hmm. Lance third overall, Josh Rosen, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, all in the top 15 20. Yeah. And and for Brock Purdy to be better than all of those quarterbacks combined times a thousand with the last pick in the draft. I mean, unbel- I mean, he literally scrambled one way, scrambled the other way, scrambled back the other way, and then back the other way and threw a ball off his, like off one foot to the corner of the end zone. Ayuk dropped it, but it was a pinpoint pass. I mean, he looked like Patrick Mahomes. I'm like, I'm like, I was I call just, him, I call him BCB now. He is poised. I mean, he's just that guy. I mean, the 49ers, we, we, we both picked 49ers to win the Super Bowl. I'm confident with that pick. Yeah, I mean, I'm after more than confident today, now. I mean, I don't see how they could lose, to be honest. The only I mean, game they, they possibly could lose is the Super Bowl, but their defense, I mean, is locked down. And they, they, don't they were them. literally awful in the second quarter and entered halftime losing yeah. by a point. For them and to it dominate it. And it just dominated like, the second half. It's like, it's over. I, yeah, it was like 23-17, 23-17, fumble, touchdown, pick, touchdown. Mm-hmm. Game over. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, we have, you know, we've got three games tomorrow, then uh, uh, Cowboys, Buccaneers. Um, one of yeah. the games that I want to focus on is uh, the Ravens-Bengals games. Because my prediction and the prediction that is up there is that I have the Ravens beating the Bengals. But the thing is, is that I only had the Ravens beating the Bengals if Lamar was healthy. So now that Lamar isn't healthy, I have the Bengals beating the Ravens. So I I just want to clear that up. But speaking of the Ravens, and I've got a pretty hot take for you today. I'll be honest. I've got the hottest of takes. So the Ravens, right? Um, in recent signing negotiations, right? They signed their, like, was it their linebacker for, like, an $100 million contract? 
I don't remember. I so they basically okay. All I know is that they signed this player, and like there are all these jokes going around about how like they signed him, but they don't extend Lamar Jackson. Like, wow. what is up with that? And then Lamar Jackson. Are you talking about Roquan like, Smith. Yeah. And they're, you know, like the thing is, is like Lamar Jackson is like clearly healthy to play in tomorrow's game, but because he didn't get extended a contract, he's not going to play for a team that doesn't want him. Right. So I know where Lamar Jackson is going to get traded to this offseason. As soon as the Ravens lose tomorrow in the coming weeks, I know I'm going to see the notification on my phone about where Lamar Jackson is going and what team he's signing for. And, you know, it's going to, I don't know like how long or how much, but I know where Mans is going. And it is three words. The Las Vegas Raiders. No way, bro. This is zero shot. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Zero shot, bro. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. No way. Derek Carr. Derek Carr is gone, right? That's fair. Yes. He, Derek Carr is gone. Leaves. He's probably going to go to the Colts or the Cowboys. Something like that, right? Pretty like yeah. mid-team. Doesn't matter. Yeah, the Jets also, you know, he's going to go to some like crappy team no matter what. But the Raiders are in need of a quarterback. And historically, the Raiders do not draft QBs. They just don't. They trade for QB. They, and the rare times where they do draft QBs, those QBs end up being awful. So they just Marcus don't. Russell. Exactly. They just don't trust the drafting process in well, what was Oakland and what is now Las Vegas. They just don't trust it at all. So that being said, they are most likely going to trade up for a quarterback. Why not trade for a mobile quarterback, which is something that they have desperately needed in recent years. I mean, they had Marcus Mariota as a backup quarterback, and we saw how, like, decent he was. Like, he never played because he was the second string behind Derek Carr. But when he did play, he would only play on, like, the third down conversions, and he would almost every time convert. So we know that the Raiders need a mobile quarterback. And not only that, but they need a quarterback, period. They've got Darren Waller. Hunter Renfro, not even to mention Devontae Adams and the fact that Josh Jacobs looks like he's going to be extending his contract in Las Vegas. They just need a quarterback. And it is about time that they had a mobile quarterback. You look at you look at before Derek Carr and the quarterbacks that they had, none of them have been mobile quarterbacks, like at all. It's all you need, like even like the Raider grades. None of them have been mobile quarterbacks. They've never been a mobile team. But now they're up and coming with guys like Devontae Adams, with guys like Josh Jacobs. And that said, they need one guy to just be the evolution of the Raiders. And Lamar Jackson is that guy. He grew up a Raider fan. He looks like he plays on the Raiders. Like, let's be real. Jesus Christ. He's just a menace. An absolute menace. He's always got the shades on. He's got the swag, bro. He's got that Raider swag on at all times. Okay? So, I mean, what do you think? I feel like... It is possible and it would make sense. It would make, it would be the best option. And I mean, McDaniels has got to go for starters, but they're not going to get rid of him yet, but he's got to go because he's not a great coach. And we've been knowing that even before he signed with the Raiders, they need someone like a Jack Del Rio back in Las Vegas because John Gruden having him back clearly wasn't a match. And that's why he's gone. Jack Del Rio wasn't like a horrible coach but there's definitely like better options as of right now there like isn't any good options I was thinking that maybe if like Sean McVay wasn't gonna stay with the Rams he could have been like the Raiders next coach and like use that young kind of dynamic that the Raiders are building to kind of like lead them to a Super Bowl but now that he's staying with the Rams you don't have a lot of options so I feel like if you're gonna get rid of McDaniels you're definitely gonna you're gonna sign like an OC or an assistant coach from some other team. And I don't think I like, I don't know who it is. I, you know, I could care less about the coaches, but I just feel like my biggest thing going into the, going into the off season and the Las Vegas Raiders GMs and owners of the Las Vegas Raiders. If you are watching this, Lamar Jackson is up for grabs. You need him without a doubt in my mind. You need to sign Lamar Jackson immediately. So please, please, 
blow this up. <laughs> Share it to your friends because Lamar Jackson is going to the Rams. Let me say this. I, I have a few. I have a few things I want to say right now. Mm-hmm, of course you do. Okay. It is definitely a hot take, but the first thing I want to say is I don't know. If I was the Ravens, I don't understand why you would get rid of Lamar Jackson because he is literally their whole entire franchise. They That's have what a good I'm saying, defense. but they, they haven't have extended defense. him. They have not extended him. There's obviously something there. There's some issue, but they need him because their defense is very good, but their offense is all reliant and all built around Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Now let me get to his fit on the Raiders. I do think he fits on the Raiders. Mm-hmm. I think that just the attitude he would bring would definitely help the Raiders. His just competitiveness and just he would he would really help galvanize that team. He, they need a new leader. Derek Carr, I really like Derek Carr as a leader, but they need a, a fresh voice in that locker room. They, they need they a new face. Need some, they need a new face. They need some swag. They need some speed. They need some flash. They're they're the Las Vegas Raiders, right? They need that extra pizzazz, you know. And they have Devonte Adams and Lamar Jackson has never had good wide receivers to mm-hmm. hit for him to have Hunter Renfro potentially Darren Waller and Devontae Adams. The only problem with this is that I don't think the Raiders players are, ha- I don't think the Raiders first will have a good culture. And I don't think that the Raiders have a lot of players that really want to stay there. Cause even Josh Jacobs seems like he wants out. No, and he said, a- he said the opposite. He made a statement like the other day about how he was planning on staying. Okay. Well, if he's down to stay and they get Lamar Jackson, that could be a very dangerous team. That's what and- I'm saying. Like immediately in Super Bowl contention, if they get Lamar Jackson healthy and they get a competent coaching staff, like if they get the 49ers uh, defensive coordinator Ryan, yeah, they, I got I, I think they need a defensive coordinator to sole up the, to like sure up the defense, and then the, they could get a hire a nice offensive coordinator mm-hmm. to really like. I don't think they need. I think they should go defense for their coach. They should. They need to yeah. build a, a. They're the Raiders. They're a tough team. They have that. They, they have that, we're the Raiders, you know? Yeah, Raiders. In, the, in the trenches, <laughs> tough team, no excuses. That's their whole mantra, right? They need to hire mm-hmm. a defensive coordinator who's going to bring a nasty, tough defense. And I think that Lamar kind of fits that he's physical. I know he's like, he's kind of like flashy, but like he's physical. He like runs over guys. He like, yeah. he brings that flash, that flair. I think that- And the cockiness, would, dude. The cockiness the with cockiness, Lamar Jackson is yeah. screams Raiders. Yeah, the, just the cockiness, the flash, the- the strength, the bruteness, the nastiness. I feel like just that attitude, they need that attitude. They need that edge because that edge will really push them forward. Mm-hmm. And then I have another, I'm not going to say this is a hot take, but we just saw the Houston Texans throw away the number one pick. And now the Bears have the number one pick, right? Yeah. And the Bears quarterback, Justin Fields, had a very nice year running the football, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But his passing is still a little bit raw, to say the least. He's not developed, right? My, I already know what you're going to say. I think that this would be very interesting, very intriguing right now. Let's say that the Baltimore Ravens trade Lamar Jackson to the Oakland Raiders. Okay, Las Vegas Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders. The Las Vegas Lamar Jackson gets traded to the Las Vegas Raiders. Mm-hmm. The Chicago Bears trade Justin Fields to the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. And they they trade Justin Fields to the Baltimore Ravens. They keep the number one pick. They get yeah. picks from either the Raiders or the Ravens. They get picks. It's like a three-way trade. Raiders have the seventh pick in the draft. Raiders have the seventh pick. So the Raiders trade the, the seventh pick to Chicago, Mm -hmm. and another second-round pick to Chicago. and Or that's a little little sketchy. I think that the – no, no. The seventh overall pick goes to the Ravens. The Ravens trade their first-round pick Mm -hmm. and their second-round pick and, like, probably a third-round pick, first, second, and third. Like, Justin Fields is a good quarterback, but he's not, like, the top, top tier. So they get, like, a late – Yeah, so they get a mid-first-round pick. Mm-hmm. They get a second round pick and probably maybe two seconds, maybe a third. I don't know. They find it. It's a three-way deal. They find a deal making. They can find other partners, right? Mm-hmm. And then the Chicago Bears draft either Bryce Young or CJ Stroud, Stroud or maybe Stroud. even Will Levis. Mm-hmm. But they, they draft a quarterback. That would be a – that that would work for all teams because 
So you're saying that, so going off of my Lamar Jackson take, going off yeah. of that, you're saying that the Bears could get a little say in all of that and give the Ravens a new quarterback yeah. whilst picking up all the Ravens picks and the Raiders picks. Okay, so this is my idea. So Lamar Jackson is going to demand a heavy price. The thing yeah. is, Lamar Jackson needs to get paid. So the Raiders are going to need to pay Lamar Jackson money. So his value yeah. goes down because mm-hmm. the Raiders are going to have to pay him like $200 something million, right? Yeah. So let's say that – that and also the thing is, I don't think the Ravens and Lamar Jackson are on the same page right now, so I don't think it's going to work. And I agree with you. Something's off there. If he, he should be signed already, there's no reason for him not to be signed. The fact that he's not signed says a lot. Mm-hmm. So there's some – issue in Baltimore right now and I think that even though he's a little injury prone if the Raiders are able to get him they don't have that many options right now they have a win now team and they don't win so they need a quarterback to fill it out they're losing a they're losing Derek Carr for sure so they need a new quarterback to fill this out so Mm -hmm. I feel like Lamar Jackson they bring him on they trade for him Mm -hmm. and then the Raiders have the seventh pick the Bears have the first pick and I don't know what pick the Ravens have but they're probably gonna have like a mid to late first yeah I, I could check right now let's see let's see the Ravens first round pick it should be like Ravens. 20 22nd 23rd let's see because did they oh but did they trade it for Roquan Smith did they I 2020 they just... no Ravens own a pick let's see yeah here let's see let's see 2023 NFL draft order. It's got to be like, I would say it's got to be like mid 20s, low to mid 20s, is my guess. Because you got to think about the fact that they are still in the playoffs. So that goes a long way. Okay. So the Lions are 18th. And then after that, I think it's like the Bucks, Seahawks, Jags, Giants, Chargers. So yeah, let's say, let's say like the Ravens have like the 21st pick. Yeah. Let's just say that. I'm, it, we could be wrong, but let's just say that mm-hmm. the Ravens would trade. The the Bears have the number one overall pick. They keep that. They yeah. trade and they get the number twenty one overall pick. Mm-hmm. Or no, the the Ravens keep their number twenty one overall pick. The uh-huh. Raiders trade their number number seven pick. Yeah. To the Bears. Why would the Raiders the, need the number one pick in the draft? <laughs> no, 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 no. The Raiders have the number seven pick. They trade the number seven pick to the Bears. And sin- to the Bears. Okay. The Bears trade Justin Fields to the Ravens. To the, to the Ravens. So the Ravens are giving up. Um, I think this is what they would have to do. The number seven pick goes to the Bears. Okay. Justin Fields goes to the to Ravens. The Ra- to the Ravens. Maybe they have to add like a third round pick because the seventh pick is worth more than Justin Fields. So yeah. they give maybe like they give. Justin Fields and a and a third round pick or a second round pick to the mm-hmm. Ravens. Yeah. Um, Lamar Jackson goes to the Raiders. Yeah. And the seventh pick goes to the Bears. Now the Bears have the seventh overall pick in the first round, but they can draft the quarterback and an offensive lineman. Yeah. The Raiders get their quarterback and they can fill out their team. And they don't have and they the Raiders, don't have a first round pick. They don't have a first round. The Raiders. So the, it'll be the, the Bears with don't. two first rounds. The bear, the bears are two first rounders. The the Raiders would have none, and then the Ravens would have one, and potentially, okay. yeah. So the Ravens would then get Justin Fields, who is a similar quarterback to to Lamar Jackson, in the sense that he's good at running the ball, not mm-hmm. as good at passing the ball. He kind of has mm-hmm. a similar system. They already have a system that works for mobile quarterbacks, so they can just implant Justin Fields in the in the system, and yeah. I feel like that would work. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's a win. It's a win all for all parties because the Ravens get younger at quarterback. Yeah. The Raiders need to win eventually, and they have a team that has is ready to win on offense. So they get mm-hmm. they get to try it out. Yeah. And then the Bears get a quarterback with a potentially higher ceiling than Justin Fields. Who knows? Bryce mm-hmm. Young, CJ Show could be better, and they can get an offensive lineman. Yeah. That why are we not GMs? Is my question. I mean, that that seems pretty that seems like an interesting <clears throat> trade, I gotta say. Let's just recap it. We can recap it. So our potential trade is mm-hmm. that Lamar Jackson would get traded to the to the Las Vegas Raiders. Yep. The Raiders would trade their number seven overall pick to the Chicago Bears. 
Yep. And the Chicago Bears would trade Justin Fields and a second or a third round pick to the Ravens. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Ravens would get Justin Fields. So that's that would potentially be a trade that benefits all parties. I don't think it's going to happen because it's a very complex trade involving many parties. Mm-hmm. And I don't, there's probably some issues with the picks or the money. Mm-hmm. Of, of course, the money because Lamar Jackson's going to get paid 200 million and Justin Fields is not going to get paid yet. It's probably not going to work, but that's mm-hmm. a potential idea. It might not work out like that, but I, I could definitely see. Justin Fields getting traded to the and Ravens. Lamar Jackson getting traded. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what we're here for, guys. We're here for the yeah. we're here for the hottest takes. We just, you yeah. know, I just I just heard it about, you know, people like this whole thing going on about like Lamar Jackson. Clearly, like, like you said, like something's going on in Baltimore Make and off. all this stuff. And so it's like, okay, like, you know. He's going to get traded maybe again. Like he's such a big, like he's such a bit, like he's such a good player, especially for like what he's done for the Ravens in past years and got them to like the AFC championship yeah. multiple times and all this kind of stuff. So like, you know, like obviously it would be like such a huge loss to lose like the guy who has basically like picked up your team and taking them to the playoffs a lot. I'm not saying that the Ravens were bad before that. It was just like, they lost a lot of players. I mean, you, look at, like, you look at like the whole like Ray Lewis era and like yeah. the team that they had, that it's like, completely different so the yeah, fact they, that they went downhill still, like, and then the lamar mix. jackson came in and lamar jackson had like relatively low expectations even though he's a first rounder and he just burst out as like a breakout star yeah. absolute stud in the league mvp mm-hmm. he, he's just been great i mean he's not obviously the best quarterback but he's a very good quarterback yeah everyone disrespects him he, i still like he's a very good quarterback i don't think he's a top top five quarterback but he's a very good quarterback he's and a raider quarterback it would be good for the raiders because they need to establish an identity Mm-hmm. And right now they don't have an identity. Mm-hmm. If they get D'Amico Ryan's from the for, for, from the 49ers and they establish a hard-nosed defensive team mm-hmm. that has the will to win and they're just a nasty defensive team that's just big big in the trenches, tough at the line of scrimmage, and then they have Lamar Jackson and and Josh Jacobs and then the, the wide receivers, I mean, that will be a filthy team. That will yeah. be a filthy team. If you have a team with a great offensive line, a great defensive line, and they, they need to develop that. But if they get a great offensive line, great defensive line, they dominate the line of scrimmage. They're tough. They're hard-nosed. And then you have mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson and Josh Jacobs running over you and through you. I mean, that would be filthy. I mean, I think I think they could win a lot of games. And I know – and also, you need a, you're in a division with Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, and Russell Wilson. Let's well, come down with Russell Wilson. But, yeah, sure, the other two. I, mean, I, I, I don't – but I still think if the Broncos – if the Broncos hire a coach – like Sean Payton, they're going to be good next year. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. they're Russell Wilson had a bad year. The Broncos have a lot of potential. I mean, that defense is real, and yeah. Russell Wilson had a terrible year, but with the right coach, they're going to be very good too. Mm-hmm. So that's yep. going to be a very good division in the in the future. They need to establish an identity and get a quarterback to replace Derek Carr. So I think Lamar Jackson would be a perfect fit. Yeah, yeah. and you know that you know. This one's uh, kind of a weird one just because it's like in the midst of like all the playoffs. All the and, playoff and we don't games. even know if the Ravens are going to lose. The Ravens might win. We don't win. even know. They could win. And, you know, they could then because I feel like if like they win, idiot. I feel like no matter what, the Ravens are going to get Because if they if they win with their backup, because is win Huntley, without it. Is I don't Huntley think they're going to keep Huntley. Healthy? I don't know. I, I, I don't. I think he might be playing, but even Huntley, he's really struggled. So I don't know. Like, because you know who my favorite quarterback is of the three in the Ravens. He went to Oregon, Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown, baby. But um, yeah, so you know, if they win and you know, they beat a team like the Bengals, who are like, especially with Jamar Chase back and healthy, like are obviously really good. If they, you know, come back and Mark Andrews comes back and like pops off against the Bengals, then they can be like, Well, what are we paying all this money to? Why would why would we pay all this money for Lamar Jackson if we don't need him? So they would get rid of him. If they lose, they can be like, well, we knew this was the case. And I think their mindset is already on the whole, we're going to get rid of Lamar Jackson. So, yeah, I mean, you know, again, a weird episode, but, you know, we're definitely going to have another episode after all the wild card games are over. We yeah. just thought, you know, the Chargers game was so bad that we had to and do this to in the middle of that it. That was a must. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then the whole Lamar Jackson, I just sat down and was like, because we were we were literally like just like dogging the Raiders in an episode like not so long ago. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, and then after Derek Carr released that he was not going to play anymore, I thought that was interesting because I was like of all the players, Derek Carr, especially since 
I feel like Josh Jacobs and the and his relationship with Derek Carr is off as well. I feel like because Josh Jacobs made the announcement that he was like stoked to be in Vegas after so many rumors of him hating being in Vegas. And then not even like a couple days later, Derek Carr releases that he's not going to play for the Raiders anymore. Did Josh Jacobs say he wants to play with the Raiders? I swear to God, I saw it. I saw something about like Josh Jacob wants to extend his contract with. Yeah, the he says Josh Jacobs hopes to be back with Silver and Black. Yeah, and that was like literally like maybe like it was like days before Derek Carr was he's either going to get traded or get cut. You think I don't know where Derek Carr is going to land. I mean, we could talk about this later, but I just I, the whole situation is kind of fascinating. There's a lot of big time QBs that are going to be moving places. I mean, Tom Brady has been listed as might being a potential target for he's the Raiders, but I don't but I don't think he's gonna retire. But if you're the Raiders, I would a hundred percent rather trade for Lamar Jackson than, than sign Tom Brady right now. That's what I I'm mean, saying. Because they've been the Raiders and Tom Brady have like I remember when he was still in New England and people were yeah. like, where is Tom Brady gonna go? And it was literally yeah. like Buccaneers, Raiders, <laughs> and yeah. some people were even saying like Texans and like Cowboys. Crazy and stuff, I'm yeah. like no. Like okay, I think sure. I think that yeah, a lot of there could be a lot of changes right now, and I know that no one wants to acknowledge this, but I feel like if the Cowboys lose to the Buccaneers, Prescott could be gone. Prescott might be gone, and that's what I don't think that Jerry's going to do that. I don't think Jerry would get rid of Dak, but like if you look at like I don't think that Dak would deserve to be the quarterback of the Cowboys if they lost to the Buccaneers, like. He leads the league in interceptions, and he missed five games. And he's missed five games. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. But we could get into all this later. We have some crazy yeah. stuff coming out later. We have we're gonna recap the whole AFC wild card or the whole uh, NFL playoff wild card weekend in a few days. Then we're also gonna go over the Premier League. Some crazy stuff. Oh my today. god! So we're gonna go over that, and then mm. in a few weeks we're gonna go with some Champions League predictions. We got a lot of stuff coming out, but. Today we just we got to get into that we had to get into that charger stuff and then this was, crazy take but that yeah was, that was brutal but um yeah that's gonna do it for episode 14 15 14, 13 yeah I don't know 14 one of the episodes, 14 yeah. one of the episodes we're there in like mid tens that's that's yeah. about it but yeah um make sure to uh, follow us on social media Instagram TikTok Twitter um at Dubs Only Sports and then. If you're watching the full episode now, you can also watch it or listen to it on Spotify if you don't want to see our ugly faces. That is also fine. Um, but yeah, it's going to do it for us. And we'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.